CryptoView, a SaaS product you won't forget. Welcome to my YouTube channel and thanks a lot for picking this video. I'm Simon Horberg and I talk a lot about tech, SaaS and online business. And in this video, we're gonna build a SaaS entirely using no-code tools. And we're gonna continue where we left off last time. If you didn't watch part one of this video, please go back and start by watching that. I'll give you a link right up here. All right, in the last video, we set up a Webflow site and then we integrated it with MemberStack using Zapier so that we can sign up and subscribe to a paid plan. In this video, we're gonna add some actual functionality to our SaaS. CryptoView is still in beta, so the only thing we're expecting it to do is the ability to add cryptocurrencies to a portfolio along with the amount of that cryptocurrency that we own. In order to do this, we need to store some data in a database. Let me present Airtable, a no-code database and platform for building applications. It's basically a spreadsheet on steroids. This is where things get really interesting. Let's head over to Airtable and create a new account. So we want to create a base from scratch and we want to have a table for our members. Let's start by adding the fields for the members here as well. So we're able to identify them from member stack. Now let's go back to modify our SAP to add a step for Airtable as well. We want the user stored in the table when we're signing up. We can connect Airtable in the same way you did Members Deck. Let's pick the base and the table we just created. Let's fill in all the data we got from creating the user in both Member Stack and Webflow. Let's check. There we go. The member was created in Airtable. Awesome. Now, let's go back to Webflow and add the option to add a cryptocurrency from a list once the user has arrived on the portfolio page. So, I'll basically create a modal that pops up when you click Add Crypto. I'm not gonna go into too much details here since there's a lot of great tutorials online that will show you how to create a model in Webflow. But what's essential here is that we have a form containing two inputs as well as a button. There's a dropdown containing the different cryptocurrencies we can pick from. And there's a number field where we can enter the amount of that asset we want to store. Now, here's an important detail. Because we need to identify which user is taking this action, we need to pass a hidden form field containing the Webflow member ID. So let's add an HTML embed here, just above the button. And we create an input type hidden with the attribute MS Data Webflow Member ID, and the data name Webflow Member ID, exactly as we named it in Member Stack. Now, that's actually all we need to do. When we click Add Asset, Webflow will take care of passing the actual Webflow Member ID along with the cryptocurrency and the amount. So let's just publish this and head back over to Airtable. So we're gonna do a few things. We're gonna create a new table for the portfolio assets. Let's just call it portfolio. And we'll add the symbol and the crypto name. The amount. And a member reference to store which member it belongs to. Now, let's head back to the members table and add a new field. This one will be a link to the portfolio table. Let's call it assets. And yes, we do want to allow for storing multiple fields. After creating this field, we'll notice that a new field members got created in the portfolio table. So we now have a relationship between these two tables. And that's exactly what we want. Awesome. Let's head back over to Zapier to wire this thing up. We're gonna create a new SAP. Let's call it add assets. But first, let's just get an overview over what's about to go down. When a form in Webflow is submitted, we want to grab that data coming from that form. It will contain a cryptocurrency, an amount, and a Webflow member ID. We'll use that ID to look up the user in Airtable in the members table we just created. We'll then create a new record with the portfolio information we just got from the form. 
we're then going to roll up all portfolio records a user have with each their cryptocurrency and amount. And we'll use that to update the member item in the Webflow CMS collection so we can display all updated information on the website. <sighs> this is going to be a big one. I'm gonna warn you, this one is going to be a little bit more technical, but still, even if you're not a programmer, I'm confident that you can still work it out. We're gonna use the form submission trigger event from Webflow. We'll pick the form we just created. Now, we're gonna set up a find record event from Airtable. We'll pick our base. We're gonna use the members table for this one. We'll search by the member Webflow ID and we'll use the value that got passed along with the form. Now, let's create a record in Airtable. We'll use the create record event. Now, we're gonna pick the portfolio table. And under the symbol field, we'll use the asset value. For now, we'll do the same for the crypto name. For the amount, we'll choose the amount value. Finally, for the member reference and members, we're gonna add the ID we got from the members table in the step before, so we can establish the relationship between the two tables. Awesome. Let's just test this one and see if it works. Super cool. We can see that everything works. Now, in order to get this data back to Webflow, we need to be a bit creative. And this is probably a good time to admit that I don't really have a lot of experience with Airtable and there's probably a lot of great ways this can be done. The way I'm doing it here is the best way I could come up with, but if you're an Airtable and Zapier expert and you totally cringe when watching this, please let us all know in the comments below how to do this better. So, in order to send back an updated list of all the assets a user currently have, we need to use two roll-up fields one of the assets and one for the amounts. So basically this will join all the records from the portfolio table together in a single comma separated list. So the idea is that we're gonna send back these two lists to Webflow and then we'll know that the position in the asset symbol list will match up with the position in the asset amount list. So this one will map to this one this one will map to this one, and so on. And in this way, we'll get all the assets along with their amounts, so we can display it in a table. In a more advanced setup, you'll probably want to do something different, since this has quite a lot of limitations, but really, using Zapier and Airtable together, there are a ton of ways you can handle this. So, let's head back over to Zapier. We want to add a few more steps. After Zapier created the new record in the portfolio field, the roll-up fields in the members table will automatically have updated as well. So let's just find that record again, exactly like we did in step two, this time with the updated values. Finally, we want to send this data back to the collection in Webflow. And if you're not a programmer, this is where you need to take a deep breath just hang in there, it'll be okay, but we do need to make an API call directly to Webflow in this next step. So let's find the action called Webhooks by Zapier. And then we're gonna do a custom request. What we want to do here is to find the item in the member collection that belongs to our user. And then we want to update that crypto assets field that we created back in part one. So let's quickly jump over to Webflow's API documentation and see how to do this. Let's click items and the patch live collectum item, which in this case means update part of an item. And we do it live without having to publish the page from Webflow again. So we get a lot of stuff out here. This is an example of an HTTP request and we'll use this as a reference. So we're gonna pick patch. And let's copy the URL. The first part here is the collection ID. Let's just go to Webflow and find that. The next part is the item ID. We know that's the Webflow member ID, so let's have Zapier add that in here. In the data field, we need to replicate what we see here in the docs. So there's a fields, then there's a the name of the field, and then the value of the field. If you've never seen this kind of syntax before, it's what we call JSON. Let's just drop this in here. Then we'll change the name to crypto assets, and the value, 
yeah, we need to be a bit creative here again since we only have one field available for both the symbol list and the amount list. So I'm simply going to follow this structure. Symbol list, colon, value list. Obviously, we could have picked multiple fields in Webflow for this and we probably should have, but yeah, this will do for now. And the last part here is some extra data the Webflow needs. Let's just add these here. This part, authorization. We need to find our Webflow token. So we're gonna add this bearer part here. Then we'll jump back to Webflow, project settings, integrations, and we'll click generate API token. Then we'll copy and paste that in here. And we'll just publish the site so Webflow knows it issued a token. Whew, that was it. But it wasn't that bad, right? Now, let's turn on this app and test it out. So we're gonna create a crypto asset. There we go. It turned up an air table. Both tables, yes. And in Webflow, there it is. It's working and it's so cool. All right, now we just need to actually display the list of cryptocurrencies that we added. Let's go back to Webflow and do a bit of designing. All right, I'm gonna add a container here. Then a text saying, your portfolio is empty. Now, in Webflow, we can add conditional visibility. So we only want to show this if the crypto assets field is not set, meaning it's empty. Now, we're gonna make a row that we'll use for each of the portfolio assets. So we'll have a label, cryptocurrency, and a label over here, amount. Then down here, we'll have the actual values and I'll just write it like this to represent that a value needs to go here. Great, this template row will give it an ID, asset list element template. Then we'll make this conditionally visible as well. Now, we'll make a hidden text field containing the value from our crypto assets field in the collection. Like this. We'll give this an ID, crypto asset raw data. Perfect. Now. Here's the part where, yeah, I'm just gonna say it as it is, we do need to do a tiny bit of JavaScript to have this work. So here's what we're gonna do. We'll use JavaScript to pick up the text from the crypto assets field, which is now hidden on the website. Then we'll split these two bits up and we'll transform them into lists in JavaScript. We're also going to pick up that template row we created and save it in the variable as raw HTML. Now, we'll go through each element of the first list, which contains the symbols, and for each round, we'll create a new HTML element using the template, but we'll replace the dash dash crypto part with the actual symbol. And since we know that the corresponding amount will be in the second list, but in the same position, we can easily access it and replace the dash dash amount part with the actual amount. And we'll just use JavaScript to inject each of these new rows into the container and remove the template row. And this is basically how the code looks in JavaScript. Pick up the text and the template, turn the text into two lists, get the HTML of the template and remove the template row from the page. Go through each element in the list, replace the values and inject a new row into the page. So let's just add this piece of code to the page. We do that under the page settings under custom code and in the bottom part for the body closing tag. There we go. And that's all the code we need. I promise there's no more than this. Now let's publish it and try it out. All right, we're gonna create a new user. Yes, now let's sign in. Okay, portfolio is empty. Yes, I'll add some crypto. Ah, yes, it works. Ladies and gentlemen, we have just built the next generation crypto platform using only no-code tools. Isn't that just so powerful? So no more excuses if you're a marketer, designer, or anyone with a great idea, really, who's not a programmer. 
As you can see, you can achieve a tremendous lot with simply using these amazing tools. Let's not forget about Wise Stamp, who is the sponsor of this little mini series. So thank you so much, Wise Stamp, for making this possible and for supporting this channel. I have collected a bunch of resources that will help you get started with no code. So check it out in the description below. If you got intrigued here, I dare you to go and check out this video where I break down the perfect tech stack of a SaaS product, this time using code. If you enjoyed watching, remember to like and subscribe, and I will see you soon for another video.